Do you know where my husband is? Please tell me if you do. Draper! Oh my god. Dream came true. Draper's gone forever. Oh my God, he's dead. <laughs> Some of these cuts look terribly deep. Why couldn't he have collapsed somewhere else? Anywhere else? We couldn't very well leave him out in the yard. This isn't just some stray cat you've decided to take in, you know. Molly, he's hurt and he needs our help. Well, his problems are no business of ours. If you feel that way, then just don't concern yourself. Go to bed. I am not going to leave you alone here with him. Molly, I'm not frightened of him. It was a wrong thing to bring that tramp into our house. I should have put my foot down. Will you stop worrying? Oh, look at him. He's barely alive. It's all the more reason why we should look after him. He's gonna die. I know it. And then what'll we do? You're going to have to make funeral arrangements, Molly. His pulse is strong and he's breathing normally. Meaning he can get up any minute now and overpower us. Will you stop worrying? He's not going to hurt us. You can't know that. He's very handsome, don't you think? Look better to me on the other side of a locked door. I wonder how this happened. He must have gotten some argument with another hobo. Probably about some half-smoked cigar. No, I don't think he's a tramp. How can you know that about him? You don't know anything about him, including how badly he's hurt. You're right. I certainly don't want anything to happen to him. I'd better call Dr. Tyler and ask him to come over. Emily, put that phone down. Where is your mind? You know Jacob Tyler isn't about to make a house call. His gout is acting up. He can hardly go into his own living room. And you expect him to travel all the way out here. Well, then, I'll take care of him. He belongs in a hospital. You don't know, you don't know if he has broken bones. He may be bleeding internally. I don't think it's that bad. You don't know, Emily. You're not a doctor. Your father is. Well, all right. When Daddy comes home, he can take care of him. That may be too late. I'm going to call the ambulance. No, don't call an ambulance. They, they might come and take him away. That's all the more reason to call them. The three of us will be healthier when he's out of this house. No, Molly, I said no! Emily! What's got into you? It's not the way I want to handle it, that's all. You got some better idea. Yes. I'll call Daddy. Dr. Gold is in Chicago on important business, and I don't think we should disturb him about this. But I want to tell Daddy what happened. He'll know what's well, best. Well, I can save you the cost of the phone call. I know exactly what he'll tell you. Do you? Yes, I do. He will tell you to call the ambulance and take that young man away, or he may tell you to call the police. 
since he was trespassing on our property. Oh, we'll see. Thank you, dear. Sit down, please. How are you feeling? Oh, I don't know. As well as can be expected, I guess. Logan. I wish there was something I could say. I know that Draper was your friend, and that you've suffered a, a terrible sense of loss. Senseless loss. Senseless. That's what makes it terrible. Why don't you have some tea? No, I, I don't care for any. Then why don't you go to bed? I'm not tired. You are emotionally exhausted. I just want to sit up for a while, all right? If you go to sleep, you'd sleep the minute your head hit the pillow. I think that's what I'm afraid of. I doze off, I'm going to dream. Probably have the same kind of dreams April does. Look, I hope you're not feeling guilty about what happened. That is, any responsibility in any way. Guilty? No. Why should I feel guilty? Just because I helped convict him, took his case to the grand jury, got him a speedy trial, sat at the prosecution table. Now, why should I feel guilty? But you had no choice. Surely you must realize that. Practicing law without fear or favor, right? Draper knew that you had a responsibility to do your job. He bore you no ill will. My job. He was innocent. But you have no reason to punish yourself. No, oh no, I know. But if I'd been a little less efficient, Take a little more time. Who knows? Well, at least Margot's killer will be brought to justice. That's not a lot of consolation right now. Now that Nola Madison has confessed to the murder, what will happen to her? That's a case I'd really like to prosecute, but since she has confessed, there's no need for a trial. Then she'll be sentenced and sent directly to, to prison. No, I'd say judging from the nature of the crime she's committed, she'll end up in a mental institution. I pity that woman. Pity? No. The only pity is that Deborah didn't put the pieces together a little sooner. It would have made all the difference. Everybody worked so hard to free Draper. It's a bitter irony. Bitter. Yes, it is. He shouldn't have been on that train. But he was, and nothing can change that. What we must do now is is to do everything possible to care for the living. Uh, I don't even want to think about April and what she's going through. She's lost so much. I know, I know. But we must forget our grief and try to help April to rebuild her life. A little late for callers. Maybe I ought to get the shotgun, huh? Hi, baby. Oh, I heard it on the radio. Isn't this dreadful, Geraldine? Yes, Rip. Poor Draper. He had everything to live for. Why did this have to happen? Well, it's a little late at night for cosmic questions. If you want the answers to that, you came to the wrong place. I have been beside myself all night, and I, I just wanted to come here and, and be with people who cared for Draper as much as I did. I can't believe that I'll never see Draper Scott again. I can't believe he's dead. It must be true what they say about the good dying young. Oh, take heart, Raven. You'll probably live forever. <clears throat> yes, well, if you'll excuse me, it's getting rather late. I think I'll go to bed. Are you sure you'll be all right? I know how much you cared for Draper. I appreciate your concern, but I'm fine. Good night. Good night, Geraldine. I don't think Draper had an enemy in the world. Half of Monticello is going to be mourning him. Look, Raven, I'm feeling a little tired myself. Maybe you'd better... Uh... No, no, don't, don't go. I, I, I don't want to be alone. Oh, I think you'll manage to survive the ordeal. I feel so guilty. This is all my fault. So many things are. What precisely are you taking responsibility for? Everything was going great for everyone in Monticello till I got here. Then all hell broke loose. Well, things are never slow when you're around. I feel like some kind of a Jonah bringing bad luck on all his friends. Maybe I shouldn't have come back. Well, since you feel that way, I'll be happy to drive you to the airport. I can't go now. No, there's no hurry, is there? First plane's not till about 7 this morning. Logan, I can't go at all. Since Draper died, it's more important for me to be here than ever before. Don't you know that? No, but then your logic has always escaped me. April is miserable. She needs her best friend to help her. 
And you're her best friend. I always have been. April has more than enough people to look after her. But I can help her. I'm a widow. I know what it's like. And besides, she has a baby. I can help her take care of her child. Oh, yeah. Since you're such a wonderful mother, you can impart to her all the wisdom that you have gained from your experience. That should take about five minutes. I'm going to make everything up to Jamie. I promise you that. Jamie doesn't need you. April doesn't need you. I don't need you. Well, I need all of you. Logan, don't you think that this crisis is the perfect time for us to get back together? To forget all these petty disagreements? Petty? Petty? <laughs> I want to be your friend. Don't you think that we could start getting along now? Why don't you ask me to do something easy, like going over Niagara Falls in a paper bag? I'm serious. Forget it. It's not going to happen. I don't care what you say. I think you still care for me. <laughs> you think wrong. You just don't want to admit it. You have a thing for me. You always have, and you always will. Raven, that particular fire died some time ago. Well, maybe it just needs a little spark to uh, kindle the flame again. I think you better leave. Logan, I've missed you. Raven, no games, please. Not tonight. You always used to love those games. <laughs> it's been such a long time. Haven't you missed loving me? No. <laughs> Could be so good again, just like it always was. Could start right now. If you want more privacy, we could go back to my hotel room. I don't think you have any feelings at all. <laughs> None. <sighs> Logan, I am not going to apologize for wanting you. We're alive. Some of us more so than others, obviously. Oh, um, that's it, isn't it? All of this Draper's death, it just turns you on, doesn't it? All right, I'm leaving. But I'm very disappointed. Sorry, I hurt your feelings. Logan, you're gonna have to rethink our relationship. Relationship? We don't have any relationship. You and I are married. We have a son, Jamie. Good night, Raven. Now that I'm back, you can't ignore me. You're going to have to deal with me. Oh, I don't know. It's a pretty big town. You stay on one side, I stay on the other. Listen. We get along fine. Listen to me, Logan. Either you're going to love me, or you're going to have to fight me. television on for me. Oh, April, you really should be resting. Maybe it's late now. I guarantee you there isn't anything decent on it. I would like to watch it, please. All right, but I'm giving you just a half an hour. After that, I want you to turn the set off and go to sleep. I will. I will. Okay. If you need anything, just call. Thank you. on top of the Grand Falls Bridge, where it derailed some four hours ago. Hampered by darkness and rain, rescue teams continue to search the wreckage in the surrounding area for survivors of the worst train wreck in recent history. At this hour, the death count stands at 24, but the number is expected to rise. Officials fear that the impact of the crash may have hurled many passengers into the rain-swelled river, making recovery of their bodies impossible. Although any loss of life is, of course, tragic, Tonight, two deaths seem particularly so. Among the rubble of the first car, the bodies of Deputy Sam Dwyer and his prisoner, Draper Scott, were recovered. Scott was being transported to Redstone Prison, where he was about to begin serving a 15-year jail term 
for a crime police now know he did not commit. A short time ago, Nola Madison, the well-known actress who is presently a resident of Monticello, made a full confession to police, oh admitting that she killed Margot Huntington Dorn and framed Mr. Scott for the it's crime. Too late. We hope to have a special Turned report with all the late, details surrounding you? this turn of events following tonight's Turned early out report. sort of cold. It's been a rough night for you, for all of us. What a job you had to do. But you got through it. You're a real pro. <laughs> it's kind of late. I wonder if anybody was watching. Well, I'm sure a lot of our friends are still up. Oh, yeah. You don't think April would still be awake, do you? I hope not. We'll stop by there first thing in the morning, all right? Oh, did I tell you? Derek Mallory called me to give me this story in person. He sounded pretty shaken. Well, let's not waste our sympathy on him, please. Why not? Why not? We kept telling him Draper was innocent. I think he knew it all along. Yet what did he do? Had to make a quick arrest, pass himself off some kind of super cop. <laughs> the only reason he arrested Draper was because the facts, facts pointed the facts that way. The facts were wrong, and you know it. Well, Derek had no way of knowing that. If anybody's responsible for putting Draper on that train, it's Derek Mallory. But that isn't true. You don't, you don't, you don't mean that. Please, I don't talk that way. Sorry. I guess I must still be in shock. Yes, of course, I'll hold on. The minute your father gets on that phone, I want to talk to him. Molly, I can handle this, really, I can. I want to tell Dr. Galt what's going on. And I don't want you to sweet-talk him into letting you have your way. Not this time. Molly, you are standing right here. You'll hear every word I say. The minute that Dr. Gall finds out that he has a dangerous criminal up in his guest room, he'll say that I was right, that we should have called an ambulance or Sheriff Redding and get that man out of this house. Hello? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm still here. Dr. Galt isn't in his room. I did manage to locate him, though. Where is he? Uh, in the hotel dining room. I can have him paged if you like. I... Uh, well, if, if he can't be reached, he can't be reached. I'll call in the morning. Goodbye. Why didn't you leave him a message to call us? Daddy must have had a terribly hard day. You see, he's in his room, fast asleep. And he left strict instructions not to be disturbed. You can't be serious about letting that man spend the night here. I most certainly am. All those articles you read about how to keep a safe home tell you never to open the door to a stranger and you're going to make a house guest of one. Molly, he is unconscious. He is badly hurt. He's no threat to us. He could wake up in the middle of the night and murder us in our sleep. If you are that concerned, then bolt your door and put a chair in front of it. I won't sleep a wink all night. Well, then make yourself a cup of tea. That seems to soothe your nerves. Now, I'm going up and look in on him. Emily? Emily, be careful. Please. <laughs>
please be all right, my darling. <laughs>